What's Gucci my bot mofos? In today's video, we have yet another revision to our ongoing series of the mouse controller. This is now the fourth major revision we have done to the mouse controller idea slash concept. And this is by far the largest leap forward in regards to making this a viable competitive option as a true modern day pro controller replacement. In the last mouse controller video, many people asked why we spent so much time and effort in creating a thumb mouse. We received hundreds if not thousands of comments of people saying I would get the exact same results if I just used a touchpad or even something more accurate such as a drawing tablet or even the touchscreen from a smartphone. Using a touchpad though always left a bad taste in my mouth as it would mean that we were just creating another version of the Steam controller which was already proven to be unsuccessful in the controller market. While the thumb mouse was used for the first three versions of the mouse controller we had much bigger plans for the use of an optical sensor in our mouse controller concept that a touchpad could never emulate. So let me explain. In the mouse controller V3 video, we saw a ton of progress by continuing down the path of shrinking the thumb mouse to as small and as light as possible. But still, we encountered some major issues, issues that we have been trying to solve the entire time of this project. First, dealing with the limited amount of space you have on a controller surface. We originally approached this problem by removing everything off the face of the controller and basically covering it with a mouse pad. What we quickly discovered though, that even if we had unlimited amount of space to use on a controller, your thumb could only comfortably, again emphasis on comfortably, reach a very limited diameter, especially as we needed the tip of our thumb to remain flat. Take using the touchscreen of your phone for example. While using the touchscreen, you don't drag your finger across the entire 5 to 6 inch screen. You do a flick type motion that naturally raises your finger upward after it has made contact with the desired area of the touchscreen. This is where we came up with using a dome like surface for our mouse pad over a flat surface by pulling inspiration from how a trackball works. The optical sensor is placed on the surface instead of being placed inside the mouse. One of the major advantages of this method was we could remove all the electronics from the thumb mouse and place them inside the controller itself. This reduces the height and weight the thumb mouse adds to your finger and allows you to be even more accurate. Basically, we designed an inside out trackball. The dome style mouse pad was designed to trace the natural movement your thumb makes while using a phone touchscreen. As our thumb constantly used to lift off the surface of the flat mouse pad from mouse controller V3, it now retains contact to the surface during these lifted flick motions, in turn greatly affecting the surface area our thumb can reach comfortably. The flat surface in mouse controller V3 only allowed your thumb to reach about 2 inches before it would naturally lift up. With mouse controller V4 though, we have doubled our thumb contact retention to about 4 inches while taking up much less space on the overall controller. The dome style mouse pad is flatter in the middle and curves more drastically towards the edges. By placing the center of the dome mouse pad in the exact location of where the right analog stick previously sat, this resulted in completely natural feeling thumb placement. The curved edge portions were used when we flicked our finger to do large in-game movements such as complete turnarounds. Then your thumb would naturally come back to rest in the center most accurate position after the flick was completed. This leads into another massive change we made, the extremely large grip we installed on the right side of the controller. This was another massive win over mouse controller V3. One of the biggest issues when trying to emulate mouse functionality onto a controller is you are no longer able to use your entire hand and arm to control the mouse. One of the main reasons one can be so accurate with a mouse is the fact that they are aiming with their entire hand and arm. On the controller though, you only have your thumb to achieve the same accuracy. So to try and solve this problem, we created a much larger grip for your palm to rest on. This allowed us to use our palm in conjunction with our thumb to gain increased accuracy. Using your palm to assist your thumb in the same way your arm assists your hand while using a mouse. Normally, controllers just have your palm kind of floating in midair. You would be surprised how much this takes away from your thumb's accuracy. Again, the point of this controller is not to replace the traditional mouse, but instead to be a massive improvement over the ancient standard analog stick. 
Think about this, the original DualShock PlayStation controller was released all the way back in 1997. In almost 25 years, the analog stick has virtually stayed unchanged to when it was originally released. Every other aspect of the gaming industry, especially the console industry, has made major leaps and bounds in technological advancements, such as graphics, speed, complexity, community, even frickin' AI. But the analog sticks, arguably the most important aspect of a controller, is exactly the same since its inception. How has that not pissed anyone else off? Don't worry, it's okay though. Sony added some vibrators in their triggers and Microsoft left their controller basically untouched for the third generation in a row. We're in good hands, guys. If these billion dollar companies won't do anything about it, then this stepsis loving YouTuber will do it himself. <laughs> The entire idea for this project came up about six months ago. I had fully become a KBM sweat. I had played with the controller for almost 20 years, then finally switched to KBM at the beginning of 2020. After about six months of only playing with keyboard and mouse, I went back to using a controller for the first time in months. In that moment, I truly realized the insane gap between controller and keyboard and mouse in terms of accuracy and overall player control. It truly justifies why cross-platform shooter games like Call of Duty and Fortnite include such a heavy aim assist for controller players. It's not that they're trying to give controller players an unfair advantage. It's that it's truly necessary for controller players to even have a fighting chance against keyboard and mouse players. So to wrap up this video, I just want to say sorry. Sorry to any one of my subscribers who are getting bored and tired of the mouse controller videos. I promise regular Tech Yesterday content will return, but the mouse controller idea has been like a leech on my brain. It's consuming all of my thoughts and attention. I don't want to give up on it until I fully see the idea through and prove to myself that it's either a total waste and be super pissed I just wasted months of my life or could be something that could truly affect the gaming industry. With that being said, I promise I have one last revision coming out, which is huge and I'm kicking myself I didn't think of it before. It will truly take this thing to the next level. If you want to give Mouse Controller V4 a shot and tell me directly that I'm crazy or the next Elon Musk of gaming, comment below. I'll be giving it away to one of you loyal bot mofos. Until next time, later.